the center of the Earth. That's impossible. Not if we follow his clues. Come on, Axel, we have to go to Iceland. Full AI filmmaking is finally here. I found a way to combine different AI tools to create entire movies. And it's all amazingly simple and pretty fast too. Just as I was finishing up my AI generated trailer for Jules Verne's classic novel Journey to the Center of the Earth, a new tool popped up that allows for a much easier and better workflow for animating characters and also landscapes. And although I'm still in the process of reworking pretty much the entire trailer with this new technique, I wanted to show it to you right now. It's just too exciting and I can't wait to see what you will create with it. Keeping characters consistent is a constant challenge with AI images. There are tools to train models for faces of specific characters and tools to replace the faces of the characters after they are generated. But I would like to achieve consistent characters in mid-journey only. So the first step is to create a character sheet for all my characters. Let's start with a full body T-pose. Enter keywords like T-pose, symmetrical, full body, arms outstretched, front view and it should work. And if it doesn't, you can use an additional image prompt with any image of a character in a T-pose. I used a screenshot of this 3D model that I found online. Upload the screenshot to Discord and copy the URL. Paste it into your prompt and add the rest of the character descriptions. And try to keep the image rate really low because we just want the pose and not like other features like colors for example. So you can try to set it around 0.2 as a starting point. Now your character's pose should be way more consistent. If there are still some cut-off parts, you can bring them into the image using Midjourney's panning tool. Once you're happy with your character, copy the image into a document and put the link next to it. And this is just for organization purposes, so we don't have to scroll through endless images later when we need them. Next we want to create a close-up of the face. Take a screenshot of the character's face and copy it into Discord and use the link as an image prompt. I've also adjusted the prompt to generate a character's face and increased the image weight to make the face as close to the one in the full body pose as possible. And when you're done, copy the image and link into your character sheet. Now let's create the environments for our characters. To keep the look of the environments consistent, I first created a, like a main reference image. And to create new views from it, I used the pan and zoom tool, but you can also create entirely new shots in the same location by using a similar prompt structure and using the original image as an image prompt. Now the fun part is to bring everything together by merging our characters with the environments. I use this prompt. And this usually works very well. The characters can still very slightly look a bit different, but I just repeat the prompt once or twice and there's usually an image in there that's perfect. Using the close-up of the character's face usually produces also a close-up of the character in a neutral pose. And you can use the zoom out or pan function to change the framing of your shot. But of course we also want to be able to direct our characters. And we do that by slightly changing the prompt. He looks so grim, so let's make him happy. Or scared. But we are not limited to emotions. Let's make him play soccer, for example. First, let's look for a reference image of a person in a cool soccer pose. PoseManiacs.com is a great resource for this. Just look for a pose that you like, use the 3D viewer to rotate it and take a screenshot. Now let's build our prompt. I'll start with a link to my character's T-pose, followed by a medium shot that I've already generated by blending together the environment and the face. I add the screenshot of the soccer pose as the third link and another image of the environment as the fourth. I also add playing soccer to the text part of the prompt. And now we have a character running around, but is he playing soccer? Let's find out by using the zoom out tool. And there it is, the final image of our character playing soccer in some random Icelandic field. If this was a bit too fast for you, I highly recommend my new Patreon page, where you can get access to exclusive step-by-step -step workflow sheets with additional tips and tricks and copyable prompts for all my new videos. And I will also try to help you wherever I can on our Discord channel. Check it out under the link in the description. The main ingredient for this workflow, the tool that made it all possible, is Runway Gen 2's new feature to generate videos out of image prompts. So let's take this shot for example. I got it by blending these images. Then I went to Runway's Gen 2 and dragged my image into the image prompt window and hit generate. Now at this point using an additional text prompt doesn't really work so we'll just leave it blank. I usually run the same prompt a few times because the motion it generates is pretty random. Sometimes the first try is amazing and matches the voiceover perfectly and sometimes it takes some more tries. Also sometimes the faces can come out uh, pretty broken. But that's actually okay, we can fix that later. 
Just focus on finding the right movement of your character for your shot. Also check out Pika Labs, another AI video generator that allows image prompts. And this is now an open beta. The quality is often a bit worse than Gen 2, but you can try it for free on their Discord channel right now and it works in a very similar way to Midjourney. And you should definitely give it a try. Once you found your perfect shot, it's time to add the facial animation. I used 11 Labs to generate my voices, but of course you can use any other tool or even your own voice. Import the voice file and generate it video into Adobe Premiere, but of course you can also use any other editing program like for example DaVinci Resolve, which is free to use, and match the audio to your video. Export the audio at the same length as the clip as a WAV or MP3 file. Then go to the wave to lip Google Colab, a tool that generates really good lip movement by uploading a video and a voice audio file. Click on copy to drive and run the first step, the setup. And this may take around a minute or something. Then scroll all the way down to lip sync to your video file and click the small play button in the second step. You can now upload your video file. Once that's done, click play on the next step and upload your audio file as well. And make sure it's just the voice, because here I accidentally uploaded the voice with the music underneath and this is what happened. Ducks. So once you've made sure you have the right clip and audio, start the last step and after a minute or so you'll have a result that looks like this. The center of the earth. That's impossible. Amazing lip sync, but really poor quality and the face is still kind of broken, so let's fix that. To fix the face and also bring back the original quality of the video, import the original Gen 2 output and the wave to lip output into your video editing program of choice. Put the wave to lip file over the original video and create a rough mask around the mouth. If necessary, use some keyframes to make it move with the face and blur it so no seam is visible. And then export the video as a PNG sequence. Now go to the Extras tab in the Automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI and upload an image from your sequence. Preferably one from the middle of the sequence with the mouth open. Now we have the option to use two different tools to fix those broken AI faces, GFPGAN and Codeformer. They produce very different results, so play around with the settings and mix and match them until you find a look that you like. I usually set the GFP GAN pretty high and use just a sprinkle of code former on top of it with reduced intensity. When you find a look that you like, go to the batch tab and enter the path to your PNG sequence and an output folder. Click generate and the whole sequence should render pretty quickly. And this is the result. The center of the earth. That's impossible. Pretty good, right? Now if your result comes out flickery or it doesn't work at all or you want to enhance your result even further, here are some quick tips and tricks. wave to lip will not work if your character is too dark or contrasty. But if you still want to use this shot, you can. You just have to increase the shadows and the general brightness before uploading to wave to lip And you can bring it back down once it's generated. And the same applies to characters with non-human skin tones. wave to lip is actually really good at recognizing faces with non-human skin tones, but Codeformer and GFPGAN won't work. But you can use a hue shift effect to make the skin more orangey, human-like before importing the sequence into stable diffusion to fix the faces. Later, you can use another hue shift with the opposite strength to restore the original colors. If the faces generated by Gen 2 are too broken, wave to lip might not be able to detect them. In this case, we can use the GFPGAN technique before uploading it to wave to lip and then it should work. Sometimes the videos generated by Gen 2 come out a bit flickery. The same can happen in the last step when we try to fix the face with the GFPGAN and Codeformer. And this can happen especially with characters with like lots of wrinkles and glasses, generally a lot of detail in their face. And so the GANs can get a bit confused where exactly to place the eyes. But you can use DaVinci Resolve's D-Flicker tool set to Fluoride or the Repair Image node to make the footage look much smoother. To bring your shot to the next level, you can also add stock footage, but not normal stock footage that you have to buy. No, AI-generated stock footage. For this shot, for example, I wanted to add a nasty abstract spiderweb effect, so I used this prompt in Runway to generate them. With a black background, you can use the Add Blending mode and play around with the opacity. And in this other test shot, I used Gen 2 to create some flowery colored lens flares. And I think having something in the foreground, even in front of the facial animation, really helps to tie everything together and sell these shots. 
I'm still working on the full trailer as I'm basically redoing every second shot with this new technique, but here's a first look at it so you can see it in action. The center of the earth? That's impossible. Not if we follow his clues. Come on, Axel, we have to go to Iceland. Hans Bjelke, he is the toughest hunter on the island. He will be your guide. What does he hunt? Ducks. Excellent, let's go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and are inspired now to use this technique to create your own AI movies with it. If you do, please send me a link or tag me in your work. I want to create a little community playlist with all your projects soon. And thank you to my Patreon supporters who helped me create these videos. If you want to have access to behind the scenes content, exclusive workflow sheets with step-by-step -step instructions, or just get feedback and share your work in our community Discord, check it out under the link in the description. Thank you very much and see you next time.